What's up, gamers? Dreamcast Guy here, and today we're talking about the new Alone in the Dark game because it feels like the entire internet is completely hating on it. I see it getting 2 out of 10s and 4 out of 10s, and it seems a bit too harsh. The game is definitely not fantastic. It's got clunky combat, it's got bad voice acting at parts, some of the graphics are not the best, but I can't despise it. As a big fan of horror, and as a person who's been playing it for the last couple days on PS5, I feel like it's a game that is made for spooky fans. I grew up playing Silent Hill and Resident Evil, and of course even the old school freaking Alone in the Dark games, and this feels like it's trying to walk in those footsteps. It wants to be spooky in a different style. But let's talk about the goods and the very bad aspects of it. Hi, I hope you're having a good day. If you could, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So, this game is definitely a bit off the rails of standard current horror. I feel like a lot of times stuff these days is much like the Resident Evil remakes. Things that are scientific with tight shooting and big labs and cool monster design. This is a game that's trying to be slower to be creepier, to be more unnerving, and more based on magic. At the beginning of Alone in the Dark, you get a chance to choose between one of two different characters who each have a slightly different campaign. There is the same objectives, the same major puzzles, the same main paths, but they also have slight differences. You're clearly supposed to beat the game twice, but I don't think most people are going to do that, but these two characters are Emily Hartwood and Detective Edward Carnby, who is the guy I decided to play. These are two big Hollywood actors, but I don't really watch TV or movies. I just lift weights and play video games, but apparently these people are incredibly famous. And so this does bring me to one of the weird issues with Alone in the Dark, which is that it feels like it's trying to be a movie at times. It's got long dramatic monologues and very steady pauses in the between like a normal conversation and sometimes it works sometimes it really doesn't now alone in the dark is a game that's very based on the occult it's set in 1920s new orleans so there's lots of voodoo magic and weird talismans and portals to alternate dimensions and weird monsters that look like they're just straight up built out of meat and bone but really, that's kind of what I like about it. So while you're playing this, the goal is to try and find Emily Hartwood's missing uncle, Jeremy. He's been getting these weird haunting visions of a person called the Shadow Man. And while he's probably just crazy, everybody else thinks that maybe something is going on. Perhaps the staff at this giant manor he lives in is in some sort of cult themselves or working with dark forces. So while you're going here, Everybody is just so strange. This is one of the things, though, that to me is kind of funny. The combat in this, let's talk about gameplay before we start to crack into all the different flaws of this, because this is a game that I think is, uh, it's definitely lower budget. The art looks good, the environments are cool, I think the puzzles are truly fantastic, but what it actually comes down to the guns blazing combat... Uh, that's when you start to notice the lack of budget. I think they paid these actors for their likeness and their voices, and that was a predominant bit of the budget. But when you're playing this, as you're exploring, as you're trying to crack codes and stuff, you run into these bad beasties. And, and when these guys show up, they're actually pretty tough. They will actually kill you relatively quick. Your character manages to regain health by chugging vodka very 1920s, but the other part of this is that when you're trying to fight, there's different styles. You can try and sneak, you can do melee attacks, although weapons have a habit of breaking relatively quick, and you have your gun. Now, the game gives you lots and lots of supplies to defend yourself. Even though this is technically a survival horror, it doesn't really feel like it's that hard to live through even the toughest encounters. I mean, everything I've ever done, it's like, okay, here's 15 piles of ammo and a couple flasks of good vodka. 
you're probably going to have a fight and you'll easily take it down. Also, the enemy AI, not spectacular. They do have a habit of getting stuck on walls or bumping into each other, or uh, sometimes they'll just run you into a wall yourself. I, I did get stuck inside of an environment once. Stuff like this is kind of goofy. Uh, I guess... A lot of the reviewers that feel hypercritical of this, I think they are pointing out very justifiably the flaws of just how much this was clearly made by a tinier team. But I also kind of enjoy that. I don't know, something about this feels so incredibly charming. It's cool to have a game with really silly actors that are reading their lines at full volume while being like, we're going to try and solve this mystery or die trying. I kind of enjoy that kind of goofiness. But when you're fighting these monsters, I like the fact that as you're going through this game, you keep appearing in these funky flashbacks. Jeremy has created these facsimiles. His memories have come to life. So in certain mysteries that you're trying to solve, you will fall into an oil rig or a cemetery or go against weird creatures. Each of the different environments, they do have different monsters or different styles of stuff that will attack you. I like the fact that as you're going through alone in a dark, it does actually have a very good pacing. It, the whole mystery of it, whether it is reading notes or trying to crack open safes or discovering an out-of-the-way key, I think that everything in here is actually really well told. Now, I only played as the David Harbour character, Detective Edward Carnby, so maybe the other lady's story is incredibly bad, but I thought his stuff was pretty decent. Although, all the other characters other than him feel better written, better acted. A lot of these people, when they're talking about what it's been like to struggle against these dark forces, as you get a chance to actually question people and get extra clues as to what's going on in this very cursed household, I feel like the other people in their weird disconnectedness, a lot of times they have this almost senile, weird way of speaking, of very casually explaining the existence of monsters or destroyed parts of the house or portals directly to hell. I like the fact that everybody is so aloof. It's kind of insane. So when David Harper, or, you know, this character, David Carnby, <laughs> He just, he, he doesn't really feel like he is actually appropriately reacting to it. He just feels so bored, which does kind of hurt it. Now, that's not necessarily to say that these Hollywood people did the worst job. It just feels like they perhaps could have been better. I really enjoyed just the general lore of this. The best part of even the worst Alone in the Dark games is always that weird prevailing sense that you are screwed, that this is just some sort of magic that, you know, a couple shots of vodka and a full clip of ammunition, these are problems that aren't necessarily going to get solved by shooting a monster in the head. I really like all the different puzzles in this, especially. I mean, something about just creeping around and slowly figuring out more parts of the map unlocking more doors. Whenever you open up the map itself, I like the fact that it will tell you where puzzles are at, if you've seen certain clues or certain rooms that need extra detective work done in them. I feel like there is a super good classic pacing to this, and that to me is one of the most difficult aspects of good horror games, is not just shoving tons of fights down your throat, not just overloading you with puzzles or having back-to-back cutscenes. I think they do the best job of spacing out the thrills, the terrors, and the weirdness. I can't hate this game. It's weird. I don't think it should be 60 bucks, but if you find this for like 40 bucks or 30 bucks, it is a steal of a deal. This is the kind of game that I feel like I want to support double A stuff. You, you know what? While it may not win the Game of the Year award or actually get too many accolades, as a horror fan, this is a great new entry in the Alone in the Dark saga. And, and weirdly enough, it's the best Alone in the Dark game we've gotten in like 15 years, 20 years. How long has it been since we actually had a good Alone in the Dark? I guess the last decent one was the one that came out back on the Dreamcast. 
a new nightmare, which I'm a big fan of. But <sighs> this isn't for everybody, but as a person that likes to be creeped out and definitely enjoys staring at a complicated multi-step puzzle, I had a blast. But what do you guys think about it? Are you excited for Alone in the Dark? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Also, I have a huge review coming out soon for uh, freaking Dragon's Dogma 2. Watch that. My face keeps sweating. I'm sorry I keep white, but I'll sweat on my face. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.